thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, this is the webinar for user management module release uh, version 1.02. Um, today we have two presenters with us. Um, Valerie Abbott, who is the product manager for software um, in Intrusion um, and also manages the UMM software and she'll start the, the webinar by giving it a brief overview of the software from uh, features and benefits perspective, um, what the requirements are for customers, um, and it's a few slides. Uh, and then she'll turn it over to Justin Simmons, who's part of our marketing applications team, and he's actually going to provide a live demo of UMM so that everybody can see how it works um, and the different functionality that you have with UMM. So, without further ado, Val, I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Um, I'm already presenting my screen, so hopefully all of you can see that. Uh, so, as Paul mentioned, I'm just going to give a quick overview of uh, UMM, some features and benefits, and the way that we're distributing it, and then Justin will give a live presentation. So, as a, at a high level, the user management module offers um, user management across all RPS panel accounts. So think of it as a layer on top of RPS. Um, so instead of uh, modifying users in individual panel accounts, this allows you to push changes for user configuration across multiple panel accounts. Uh, it allows you to manage up to 250,000 users across 10,000 control panels. So it's a very large scale piece of software. I mean, it's really, it was designed for more of a uh, corporate level, but we, with this new release, we hope that it will also be able to be used uh, with a much smaller set of users. Each UMM user does have a global configuration, so when you do configuration of a user, these will be the user's default settings when you add them to panel accounts. It allows you to quickly import uh, users into your UMM user list both from existing RPS panel accounts as well as CSV files with user names. You can quickly add and delete users from RPS panel accounts all in the UMM interface, so then you don't have to go into individual panel accounts to be able to do that. You can audit your UMM users for uh, certain configuration consistencies. Do they have the same passcode? Do they have the same card credentials? That's an easy, uh, this is an easy way to be able to make sure that the user is configured the same across all panel accounts. UMM itself also uh, records history of all the changes made through this piece of software, so if you ever need to go back and reference when a user was changed, UMM actually hosts that itself. And it also offers a customizable and dynamic workspace, so if you just want to see some of the windows in UMM or if you want to make certain windows bigger or smaller, then you can customize that workspace to work more efficiently. So just to dig into that a little bit deeper, um, so users uh, will all be managed under the same user ID, um, and then UMM is really a benefit to those who need to manage these users across multiple panel accounts. So the, ideally they would have the same configuration across the different panel accounts, but UMM does allow you to go through and modify user configuration in particular panel accounts, especially for anyone who may just be a temporary user to that panel. Uh, but the idea is that they do have the same or similar credentials and same or similar authority level configurations by area across all of these accounts. So some common use cases uh, would be adding or removing a user, changing their passcode quickly and easily, whether it's just in one panel account or across all of the panel accounts to which they have access, and also doing the authority level configuration. Um, some example applications uh, would be pharmacies, banks, really anything that has like a multi-site installation where these users would need to be able to gain access or perhaps be removed uh, from different panels across uh, multiple installations. In terms of technical specifications for UMM 102, so this new release of UMM 102 does require the newest RPS release, which was released at the end of January. So that's RPS 604. It is available on our website and actually is now hosted on a local Fairport server. So the, the downloads are much quicker in North America. Um, but basically that's tied to all of the uh, global configurations for the users themselves. They actually did require uh, a database update of RPS. 
Um, so all of your user UMM users will need to upgrade to the latest RPS to be able to use UMM 1.02. Um, for pushing the changes made in UMM down to RPS panel accounts, we do recommend the unatten unattended operation mode in RPS. So that's also goes back to when uh, when you install RPS 604, make sure that you install it for unattended operation and then make sure that the panel accounts that are being modified through UMM are configured for unattended operation uh, because the UMM does not directly access those panel accounts. All changes made in UMM are actually written to the RPS database, so you want to make sure that those changes are actually pushed down to the panels. Um, so for the control panels that UMM does support, so it's our legacy G series, our new G series, and our B series panels. And then you can see the more specific tech specs on the right. And with that, I'll turn it over to Justin. Okay, so uh, this is UMM. Uh, when you first log, first get uh, into it, it's going to ask you for a username and password. The, this uses the same users as RPS, um, and and you could also restrict users from uh, who can access it. But uh, I'm just going to use my default RPS login, admin, and four ones. And um, so, like we've already discussed, this is uh, UMM is is based off of uh, the RPS database. It actually has to connect to the RPS connect database and manage the the panels and the users that are already in there. Um, so, the, the uh, part where we'll start off is that um, in the, the bottom left hand corner we have the users tab. And note that there's a panel users and a users tab. Users is the UMM users and uh, note that this is the intent of how UMM is going to manage users is that UMM is going to be the master of any users that are inside of UMM and uh, it's once you you would start off by creating the user inside of UMM and then assigning them to panels as needed so uh, the first step I'll just go ahead and, and create a, a test user here um, now note we have this user ID field. This is going to be the actual text that's going to be stored in the username field inside of the panel, um, but it needs to be something that is going to be unique across all the users in, in any panel. Um, so we're it, you could use lots of different of methods of, of doing this, but one that, that we could use here is like our uh, in NT usernames in Windows. So like for instance, mine is. You could use that as the the unique user ID. You could also use maybe the uh, the first part of your email address for if you've got a company wide email or district wide email, whoever the user is. Uh, but anyway, just note that that, that is ne that needs to be something that's that's globally unique. Um, and then from there, you'll go ahead and fill in user information as usual. Um, now you have a, uh, the opportunity to enter passcode and card data and authority levels here, and uh, this will be used as basically the default whenever the, this user is added to a panel uh, for the first time this is the information it's going to fill in by default uh, if you come along in here later and change things here it, it gives you the option to push them out to the panels but don't uh, don't bet on the the user data that's going to be listed in the the user section of the screen to always be up to date with what's actually stored in the panels so uh, I'll just put something in here And that default, or you know, just like in RPS, we have a site code of 255 that's that's basically the same as not having any site code at all. Um, and then you can select the authority levels for a few of the areas. And uh, then these can be overwritten once the user's in the in the panel, but maybe this is a, a standard that you would have a, a, some kind of a template and you can put that information in here. So now that I've added that person, that's that's now in the, the UMM section of the database, but that user is not currently anywhere inside of RPS. So I'm just going to double click that person. It just lets me know that there's no panels assigned, but it's it has now selected me up here. You can see uh, this is where I'm going to adjust the user mappings and what what points or what I'm sorry what panels that user is assigned to. So um, I'm going to click the drop down menu here, and uh, I actually have quite a few accounts uh, in my in my database you can see there's quite a few in here but uh, you, you can start filtering those uh, as you as you look in here um, you know there's a few different ways you could filter it by uh, 
for my default, it's using starts with. So if the panel name starts with UMM, then it would start show up here, or you could get more complicated if you needed to be for some reason. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say I want to assign this user to this UMM branch A. I just double click it, and then user or the UMM branch B. And uh, note by uh, by default, all this is, uh, has italicized uh, font. That's just identifying that the, these are changes that have been made that have not been actually saved to the database yet. Uh, but you can see as I scroll over, there's the passcode that I entered, the site code and card data, um, and the area authorities. This is something that I want to note that in previous versions of, of UMM, you, you were not able to, from here, change the authority level for the user. That is something you can do now. Um, so you don't have to go to some other section after you've added them. So I'll make my changes and save that. And then when I click the, the Save Changes button, you'll see this Audit section. It's going through and it's, uh, it's doing some things to, to make sure that there's no conflicts with my passcode or my, my user ID with other, other passcodes in those panels. Um, there are, are a few other options that, that we can configure and I'll show, to, show you a little later on uh, what things are checked. Um, but this is the, the place you would go to make sure or to, you can watch it being d saved in real time. And if there was any, any problems with uh, making the save, you'd get a, a message pop up saying that you can go check this audit section to find out why something failed. Um, so as you're adding, uh, oh, so let me, let me go in and, and make some changes to, uh, let's say the, the passcode. Um, I can right click in here and say generate passcode and it'll automatically generate a passcode that is not that is unique it uh, shouldn't be duplicated across multiple panels uh, if you wanted to you can select multiple panels and say generate passcode and it'll automatically change that um, and then once I save my changes it will write it to the RPS database now let's say I, I go back and uh, go to add my the user to another branch or another panel um, I select that and you can see that, that carried the, the information down from that, that first row. That's where it's going to uh, gather that information and then duplicate that going forward. Um, but also note that you can see the same user down in the, the UMM users section still shows the old passcode even though that has already been saved in the panel. So that's where you can just, just note that it is uh, potential to be different there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save here. Now, just to, to show what I was talking about before, uh, now that I've got a different passcode down here, I can go and open this, or I'm sorry, uh, edit this user. So right click on the user and say change. And I can make this passcode something different. And click OK. It's going to let me know that, hey, this, this user is assigned to these three panels. You just made a change. Um, and you can click yes if you want to update those, that, those users in those, those panels. Um, So uh, in the, the past, there's this second uh, tab down here for panel users where you can select a given panel and um, edit the users and all of the users inside of it. Uh, I'll just bring up one here. Um, so this is still available. Um, I, I happen to pick a, a panel that's not got any UMM users assigned to it, but um, if you wanted to, you can still manage the users that are not actually assigned to UMM by going, going to this section uh, if that if you have any need for that. Um, so I have this this panel that I've purposely created that it's a we're saying it's a it's a pre-existing this panel was already installed before UMM was ever added to uh, this this customer's yeah uh, availability. Uh, so I can go into file and import and then existing users from panel accounts. And I'm going to deselect all, select all. Um, I'll just note that, that this, this is something that we've identified and needs some improvement, but uh, it, it isn't sorted in, in any particular order. So I need to go scroll through here until I find my, my UMM branch E pre exist. Now there's this import options button. You don't have to select this every time, but this is where you would choose how does UMM decide whether that uh, user should be imported or not. Um, you could go with any users that have passcodes or 
I could say any users that have car, uh, card data, or I could say both, say I'm only going to import users that have both passcodes and card data. For my, my purposes here, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just say passcodes. Um, these are some other options that you, you could uh, select that allow a user to have conflicting passcodes. This means uh, it's, it's, it's okay to import this, this user even though him, they have the same passcode as some other user inside of, our, uh, of UMM. Uh, it, where that would be useful is that um, you've got 10,000 panels and 250,000 users out there. You don't have, it's not possible to have um, everybody have a unique passcode in every panel. But uh, this user that I'm importing is from the, the New York office. He's never going to go to the uh, Los Angeles office or something like that. Then it doesn't really matter that he has a duplicated passcode. Um, so same thing with card data, same thing with RFID. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And if you want to, this audit only will just check through and see that there's not going to be any problems with doing the, uh, the import. Or you can just do audit and import, and it'll automatically import them. So in this, this panel, which I happen to still have open in the background here, it found these 11 users and imported them. And uh, then there's additional users that did not have a passcode. They did not get entered. So now I go back out and go to my users, my UMM users section. Now I have a bunch of, of newly imported users that I can then make changes to as needed and go maybe assign them to other branches that were already in the database. And then go save my changes and then this is again writing them to the RPS database. Um, so that's, I, we've, we've said it before but I'm going to say it again just to stress it that uh, these changes are only written to the RPS database. They do not actually get written to the panel until someone somehow RPS connects to that panel. Uh, generally, we recommend that you would use unattended mode, or what we call also un unattended over network, where uh, you'd set up a schedule and RPS would automatically connect to panels uh, maybe once a day, maybe a couple times a day, and, uh, and synchronize any changes out to the panel. Uh, but it is also possible to use uh, what we call unattended over modem, which requires a panel to contact RPS and synchronize changes. Or it could simply be, uh, in, maybe in some cases, it's easier just to have uh, operators that would go in and, and synchronize those changes whenever they needed it. That's, that's possible. Um, so i just point out quickly that you know, all these, these frames that are inside here are, are resizable. Uh, you can move things around to, to see where everything goes. Um, One of the things that is important to, to a lot of users is that if you're managing all these users across multiple panels, you want to be able to do some kind of a, an audit to go back and find out, you know, hey, who, who changed that passcode? Why does this person have access to this door all of a sudden? So we, this is where we keep this history uh, field over here. Uh, by default, it's just going to be showing you the things that have changed in this session, but you could choose get all records and it would show you everything that's happened in there. Um, and then it's also possible to export that history and then you could import that. It would be a, a CSV file that you could then import into Excel or something like that and, and uh, kind of create your own reports on what has happened in that. Um, next I want to go to this configure and then options. Sorry, I'm just I'm bypassing this database settings. Just know that that's just telling it how to, to connect to the RPS database. Um, you, you would have to have gotten in here already to, to that would have had to have been configured properly already for you to get this far anyway. Um, but this options section, there are some options in, in how you deal with all the data that's inside of UMM. Um, the first one is this field is called uh, user ID and it's maybe there's there's something, oh I'm, I'm sorry, uh, this, <laughs> so this is just the user ID section in, in newer panels uh, that, that field could hold up to uh, 32 characters, but uh, in older panels, uh, GB4 version 1 specifically, as, as mentioned here, it could only be 16 characters and they would all be forced to be uh, capital letters. Um, so this is choosing whether that has to comply with those or it allows for the characters that are allowed in, in a newer panel. So user mapping options, this has to do with you know, when you're mapping this UMM user uh, to panel, panel users. Um, you can have it automatically select the next available user number. So 
Um, if you look in uh, a panel and the first 10 users have uh, usernames and passcodes, then, then it would automatically select user number 11 for this, this new mapping. Um, now the, the next three fields are, are what actually are used to determine whether that user is already used or not. So it could go with if the username is at the default, which is just you know user space, name, space, number, um, then, then consider that user to be already used. If the passcode is blank, then consider the, the user not already used or if the card data is blank. Uh, so Auto-replicate from first row this is where I was showing earlier where I, I made some changes to that, that first row, changed the passcode, and then when I added that user to a new panel, automatically brought over that information. Uh, so that's the, the default op, uh, option. Um, you might also decide that you know, I only want the UMM users to show up in the panel at user number 100 and greater or something like that so you can choose this allowed number range to, from 1 to 1000 or whatever you would like to have there. Um, randomized passcode, we're removing mapping so that's just if you're removing that user from from a particular panel whether it should randomize the passcode whenever it's coming out. Um, allow changes to the installer so user, user number 0 inside of a panel is the installer passcode uh, by default we don't bring those in to, to UMM Um, audit options. So these are some of the things that's going to check out uh, when it's making changes to the panel and, and, and saving them to the panel. Um, you could choose that you would never have a blank passcode. Uh, you could choose that all the passcodes for that user in every panel is always the same. Um, so like you can see in the background my current user has passcode 98942 in, in all four or all three panels. You could, uh, that, that doesn't have to be the case. You could have multiple different passcodes or you could enforce it's always the same. Um, same thing for the site codes. Uh, you could you could say that the site code should always equal a, a given number. Um, so the same thing with the, the card data, make sure it's the same across all panels. Uh, all the area, area authority levels could be the same across all panels. Um, passcodes length, you, you could enforce that they must be a certain length. Um, you just check passcodes against duress uh, that's more from uh, one one UMM user to another. It's that that's always going to check the passcodes against the rest. So when it's saving it in the panel and uh, checking against other panel uh, passcodes, but you could also enforce that across all UMM users that they would uh, check to make sure they're not going to be uh, conflicting with the rest passcodes. The operator security level. This is where you can choose uh, for a user for a, an RPS operator to be able to log into UMM and manage users in UMM, they must be uh, a given uh, authority level or higher. Um, and then uh, this user ID, you could, you could change how that's, what that's named, uh, call it username or, or whatever it is that you wanted to, to show up in this field. Um, one uh, similar to RPS, as you're running through here, if you have any questions on something, you can click on a field that you have questions about and hit F1, and it will bring up the help to that section. Um, so it's fairly easy to, to just click on it and say, what's this? Um, one other thing we wanted to mention is that UMM doesn't have a reporting feature to be able to, to run a report and say, uh, where does this, this user have access to, what's, uh, what's the passcodes and all these users, things like that. All, all reports on activity and what, who has access to what would still have to be run through RPS. Um, so just take note of that. Um, is there anything else? Oh, yeah. So uh, let's say you've got a person that was just, just left the company for whatever reason. I can uh, right-click that person and say delete user and that will immediately delete that user from every panel that they're assigned to and delete them from UMM so um, that change gets written to RPS immediately but of course like we've mentioned several times before it, it would only go out whenever the uh, RPS is synchronized with that panel. Um, you could also do this uh, on an individual panel basis you could uh, open a user and then select that that row for that panel and say mark for deletion 
And so I'm just going to be removing the user from that, that one panel whenever I save my changes. Okay. Um, okay, I think uh, that covers everything we had planned. Let's see if we can get everybody unmuted and give you an opportunity to ask questions. Anybody have any questions? Justin, it's RPS Lite also, right? Of yes. Course. Yes, this will work with RPS and RPS Lite. And if the panels are older, of course, it's, you have to swap them out, right? If they're like G and below? Yes, this will only work with uh, going all the way back to a GV3. Uh, the, the first release of that was a H, uh, 8.0 something. So every, everything 8.0 something and, and newer will work with this. Looks like not everybody, everybody didn't get automatically unmuted, but if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute your microphone and, and ask. Oh, I guess uh, we've got one person. How many changes will be saved in the history log? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, off, uh, from what I've seen, I would think that it there's no um, restriction on that right now. It it would it's got a, a database entry where those would be saved to, and it could potentially continue to grow. Uh, but I'll I'll look into that and see if I can let everybody know. Make sure for sure. Can you upload users into UMM via Excel? So if we go back over to the UMM window, there is an option to import users, and you can import a users from a, a CSV or comma-separated uh, list, but that would only import the users themselves. It would not import any kind of mapping or passcodes and things like that. Any other questions? Hi, Justin, it's Ian. Hi. Hey, um, in the early part of your demonstration, you showed that you could manually select a pa user passcode. And then as you built UMM, and, and that, that, was, um, that was identified in the lower left-hand quadrant of the screen, as you as you progressed into the configuration of the program, you could auto-generate passcodes, and then you would have a situation where UMM would have a registry for two different passcodes associated with that user. Is there a reason why when you auto-generated the passcode, it was not synchronized in that lower left-hand quadrant, and is there value associated with that? Um, it's just that the it's possible for the UMM user to have a different passcode in multiple different panels, and so it wouldn't, the, the, the lower left-hand side in the UMM user section, it only has the capability of showing one passcode there. So uh, it just, it, it keeps whatever was entered there as the, basically the default data for that user. Um, it doesn't synchronize with what all the things were, that were, are, are put into the, the individual panels. Okay, thanks. And then in your example of that changing the passcode for that user, you show where you could do that manually a second time, but could you also in the upper left-hand quadrant auto-generate a new passcode for a user in the scenario of a user's passcode um, being compromised? Yes. So if you select, I, in this particular instance, I've selected both panels this user is assigned to, but I could select just one. Uh, and then you right click on that, that passcode and choose generate passcode and that will automatically generate a, a unique passcode for that user. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I guess it sounds like that's all the questions we have. So thank you for, oh, oh sorry, there's a question that popped up. Will the forthcoming video demonstrate how to link to an RPS database? Um, so whenever you first open UMM, and even if it's not the first time ever, uh, I'm gonna just close UMM and reopen it. You'll come up to a login window. And in that login window, there's a database settings option. Uh, and actually, this, this is something I, I forgot to mention. Um, so I happen to have UMM and RPS installed on the same computer right now. That does not have to be the case. You could have RPS installed uh, on some, somewhere else on the network and then uh, a database hosted on a database server somewhere and then UMM on a, on a completely different computer. And uh, this, is, this database settings section is where you would go to tell UMM how to connect to the RPS database. Um, so since I have RPS installed on the same computer, all of its, uh, its settings are saved in the registry and so UMM was able to just go look in the registry and find the, uh, the information on how to connect to the RPS database. But uh, if you're connected, if you're installing UMM on a, on a totally separate computer, you would need to go to this section, tell it the, the SQL Server name, database name, and, and the uh, SQL Server authentication credentials. So that's at the, the very beginning when you first log in. Okay, I don't want to jump off here too quickly, so feel free if you have another question. Okay, we'll go ahead and, and end it here then. Uh, feel free to, to send us any other questions you might have, and uh, thank you for joining. Have a good day.